So in this video we are going to discuss about glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. G6PD is an important enzyme in the carbohydrate metabolism. So let's see what happens in its deficiency. So first we will go through some introduction, then pathogenesis, then clinical features and mechanism leading to it, then laboratory free findings and finally the treatment. So G6PD or glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency is a hemolytic disease due to red cell enzyme deficiency. So due to the enzyme deficiency, there is the destruction of RBCs in this disease. Here there is abnormality in the HMP shunt or hexose monophosphate shunt which is used for the metabolism of glutathione. It results from either deficient or impaired enzyme function which further reduce the ability of red cells to protect themselves against oxidative injuries and thus it leads to hemolysis. The hereditary deficiency of G6PD is a recessive X-linked trait which means it is expressed more in males than in females because males have XY chromosome. So a recessive X-linked trait will be expressed with the presence of a single allele, recessive allele on the X chromosome. Whereas in females it has to be present in both the X chromosome then only it will be expressed. So mostly female act, females act as carriers of this disease. Remember this is the most common enzyme deficiency. Now let's come to the pathogenesis of this disease or where this disease originates. So in the first step of HMP shunt, glucose 6-phosphate is oxidized 6-phosphogluconate with the help of G6PD enzyme. Simultaneously, a NADP is reduced to NADPH. This NADPH is used for reduction of oxidized glutathione to reduce glutathione with the help of glutathione reductase. Now this reduced glutathione is important for conversion of harmful reactive oxygen species like H2O2 to less harmful substance like H2O. So it is important for uh, preventing the damage to the RBC. What happens? Uh, due to the deficiency of G6PD there is increase in the level of H2O2 which causes damage to the RBC or other reactive oxygen species in the RBC cause damage to the cell. Now let us come to the G6PD genetic variants. So more than 400 are known but mostly they are harmless. The most common variants of G6PD with normal activity are G6PD B plus being the most common then G6PD A plus. Then the most common variants with reduced activity are G6PD A minus and G6PD B minus. The minus here denotes the deficiency or absence of the enzyme. So this is G6PD B- is also called the Mediterranean form and it is the most severe form of this disease. Now coming to the clinical features, here you can find episodic hemolysis. There are triggers that lead to acute hemolytic anemia. So acute hemolytic anemia is the first clinical features. And it is caused by various 
triggers like infections, drugs and food, infections like viral hepatitis, pneumonia, typhoid fever and drugs like primaquine and chloroquine which are antimalarials, sulfonamides, nitrofurantoins and food like fava bean and it is a phenomenon called favism. So how do these triggers lead to acute hemolytic anemia? Let's see. So oxidative damage by these triggers can either lead to intravascular or extravascular hemolysis. So mostly intravascular hemolysis is seen and this uh, cause acute hemolytic anemia. But also this oxidative damage cause denaturation of hemoglobin which further causes deoxygenated precipitates of hemoglobin to occur which form Heinz bodies. These Heinz bodies are present in the RBC and when this RBC pass through the spleen these are destroyed by the splenic macrophages. The splenic macrophages attack on the these Heinz body and take a form of uh, bite of it and these cells appear like bite cells and this is called extravascular hemolysis which occurs in the spleen. Now uncommonly there are other two conditions also in G6PD deficiency these are neonatal jaundice and chronic non spirocytic hemolytic anemia which is a low grade type of chronic anemia. Neonatal jaundice is a feature of Mediterranean type mostly and hemolytic anemia is rarely severe. So in CNS HA or chronic non spirocytic hemolytic anemia which is a low grade or variable degree of chronic anemia it develops in a very minority small minority of people patients here mainly hemolysis is extravascular and features are reticulocytosis gallstone splenomegaly but this is uncommon also G6PD deficiency mainly the African variety of gene denoted by G6PD A- has a protective effect against Plasmodium falciparum because in this disease there is an increased oxidative stress in the RBC in which the parasite cannot survive so there is a development of resistance to this parasite and thus to malaria. Now coming to the laboratory findings there is evidence of intravascular hemolysis which mainly occurs in acute hemolytic anemia. So we will have increased unconjugated bilirubin, hemoglobinemia, hemoglobinuria, high LDH, low or no haptoglobin. Also there will be anemia due to hemolysis. In the peripheral blood film you can find bite cells uh, like some part of the RBC is bitten off by the macrophages and also you can see Heinz bodies in the supravital staining which are the denatured precipitates of the hemoglobin. Other features are the RBCs are normocytic and normochromic. Now here is the peripheral blood smear. You can see the RBCs seem as if they have been bitten off. In the supravital staining you can see the denatured hemoglobin in the form of Heinz bodies. Coming to the treatment, uh, the main step is removal of triggering agent, the oxidizing agent and avoiding further exposure to it. Then comes Supportive therapy by blood transfusion of folic acid supplements. Then comes treatment of infection which leads to the disease which is one of the triggering agents. Then comes genetic counseling. Thank you for watching this video. We come to the end now. If you like the video, please click on the like button and share your feedbacks in the comments and also do not forget to subscribe to this channel for more of such kind of videos.